What's going on, Bulldogs? My name is Mr. Chitwood, and welcome to AgSci Advanced World History. This is going to be an awesome year. Obviously, it's going to be a crazy, weird year, but I'm excited for it, and I'm excited for this 20 to 21 school year with you guys. Uh, before we get started talking about the ins and outs of the syllabus, a couple things to note. Uh, yes, I am Mr. Cameron Chitwood. This is my email right here at cchitwood at tusd.net. That's a pretty good place to get a hold of me. Microsoft Teams obviously is going to be where we're going to be doing a lot of our classroom instruction during distance learning, but that's also going to be a place where throughout the year I will keep updates and uh, notifications and files and assignments. Uh, but parents, this is the best way to get a hold of me. Uh, when we get back to school, uh, my room is F101, also known as the leadership building, because I'm also the activities director at this and leadership teacher at this school. So uh, F101 is going to be where we have our class. But until we get back on campus, we're going to be meeting on Microsoft Teams in our digital classroom. Uh, my office hours for this class are going to be Mondays and Thursdays from 12.30 to 3.30 p.m. via Microsoft Teams or by virtual appointment. And you can also find at this other link down below a link to the bell schedule for distance learning uh, while we are still not allowed on campus. So what the heck is world history? What the heck is AgSci Advanced World History? This course is an interdisciplinary thematic based program that fulfills the world history requirements for sophomores entering their second year in the AgSci Academy. Reading, writing, lit listening, and speaking skills are developed as students critically examine major historical movements, themes, and events and focusing on interrelating world literature and agricultural scientific based themes. The units of instruction for this course and the AgSci English 2 have common objectives, themes, and teaching timeframes that promote both cooperative learning and individual student growth. This course is designed to offer both students adequate rigor and challenge to participate in the IB program. And below, you're going to see a outline of what you can expect over the, both the first semester and the second semester in terms of units of study. So to talk about what this course is going to focus on over the next two semesters, the first semester is going to begin with us talking about relationship, community building, and skill building. Once we're done with that, we're going to transition into the rise of democratic ideas and then on to talking about the 17th and 18th century revolutions, such as the American and French revolutions. We will then move on to talking about the Industrial Revolution and finish up this first semester talking about imperialism and colonialism throughout the world. The second semester will begin talking about World War I, and then we will move into talking about this interwar period with the rise of revolutions throughout Europe and this thing called nationalism. We will then transition to World War II and the Cold War and finally finishing up the year talking about our modern global issues that we are facing in this world today. Materials that you're going to need for this class um, and that I'm looking to see that you guys bring every single day either to our digital or our physical classroom is going to be a college ruled line paper. You may need um, a loose leaf paper. It could be a notebook. It does not really matter to me. Uh, pens or number two pencils, whatever your preference is. A computer, and if you don't have one, contact the district if you need a digital device or a hotspot. And a Microsoft Teams account. That's where all of my communication and assignments and video um, meeting times will be posted um, through Microsoft Teams. The textbook that you're going to be using is this one right here called HMH Social Studies California Modern World History from the Hute Mifflin Harcourt. Um, it was just last updated in 2019, so they're still pretty new. Make sure that you take care of them and, and uh, properly care for them throughout the year. The learning model for this class, primarily in distance learning, uh, we are going to be meeting on Microsoft Forms, or Microsoft Teams, uh, and you guys will be learning through what I call a flipped learning model. And what that looks like in practice in a regular uh, class where we could report to the school every single day is that students would come in, we'd focus on projects, we'd focus on primary source documents and doing these activities to dig deep into the material. That's still going to happen within our synchronous learning where I'm learning and teaching with you guys, the students, um, and that direct instruction where we're providing the content, that typical lecture material 
is typically going to be reserved for some type of homework. So you can expect as a student for me to tell you to go watch a lecture video, me doing exactly what you're doing basically right now, getting the content that you would normally get from a lecture and then coming back the next day or the day after that prepared to talk about that content or to use it in some sort of a discussion or investigation type activity. Um, in terms of distance learning, uh, CDE does a great job of defining exactly what distance learning means, but basically we're going to be on Microsoft Teams until we can come back and we're told that it is safe. So until then, we will be uh, blending together a minimum of 20 to 40 minutes, depending on the day, of live instruction. That is called the synchronous period. The asynchronous time period is going to be reserved for that time after uh, lunch. So between 12.30 and 3.30, students have the opportunity to contact me, reach out to me, either on Microsoft Teams or email, to either have a video conference uh, during my office hours or some sort of um, additional help. I am here to assist all of my students throughout the day. So during that asynchronous time, it is important to make sure to reach out to me if you need some sort of um, live interaction assistance that way. Um, the learning model will stay the same, whether we're in a distance learning, a hybrid, or a physical, normal kind of learning environment. Um, but something you should keep in mind is that an asterisk throughout this uh, syllabus video and throughout the syllabi will appear whenever distance learning might affect the policies. So if we're looking at this next slide or this next part of the syllabus, Microsoft Teams is going to be the primary platform that we use for distance learning. Um, I would strongly suggest it that you download both the Microsoft Teams app on either your digital device, be it a cell phone, and the computer that you're working off of. There will be things that I'm asking you to work off of in terms of a computer being probably the easiest to, to do it, but there may be some things that you could do on your phone. Um, so you're gonna have to make that decision whether or not um, the lesson that I'm asking you to do is gonna be more appropriate for a computer or cell phone, but really, for the most part, we can meet on either. Um, if you have not yet downloaded it, this link will be something you can click on to download Microsoft Teams. This is your login information on both Teams and the district issued devices. You can also scan that QR code with your phone. The homework policy for this class is that students can expect to have homework every night but will receive no more homework than is stated by board policy 6154. Homework uh, assignments are expected to be completed by the due date, uh, but students who are in school on the day that an assignment is due or um, need to leave prior to the classes uh, or the period's conclusion should turn that assignment in prior to leaving the premises. When it comes to distance learning, what is my homework policy? Basically, distance learning and hybrid learning or um, normal learning, the academic content, classwork, and independent work. Um, shall all be combined to meet the daily minimum of minutes per grade level, but should not still exceed that stated by board policy 6154. But when it comes to late work, late work assignments in my class have specific, or assignments have specific due dates, but that does not mean that the work cannot still be turned in. In fact, I have a policy where students can turn in any assignment late until the end of that current unit that we are in. So say, for example, if we go back up to our units, the a student uh, misses the first assignment of the year, the first assignment of the year in unit number one. They have until we move to unit number two to turn that assignment in, and that will typically be very explicit for the students. So I will make that very known. Um, to receive up to 50% of the possible points. Um, if you have an excused absence the day an assignment is due, you may turn in the following um, next full class period. Um, but if you are turning in or submitting an assignment late, please make sure that the late um, denotation is up at the top of it. Um, when it comes to distance learning, uh, it is super important for you guys to really make sure that we are in the contact loop with you, the student, or you, the parents, when a student is not going to be in class. Um, that way we can not only understand that 
uh, yes, you weren't in class and make that explicit to us, but also know how we can um, get you back up to speed when you get back. Um, so make sure that when it comes to um, distance learning that you're keeping us in the loop if for some reason you're not able to log in. Um, but um, really it's the same thing when we get back to normal school. When it comes to makeup tests and work, uh, any test missed due to an excused absence can still be taken uh, as soon as possible the first day school first school day back uh, you need to talk with me make some arrangements so that we can get you the work that you missed in the test schedule um, the an example of how much time a student might get is if you're gone for a series of two or more consecutive days excused absences prior to a scheduled test then you will be allowed the time that same amount of time to make up that test um, typically I give makeup days on Tuesdays and Thursdays so really you have until the next Tuesday or Thursday and to make up that test. Um, in terms of suspensions, um, according to uh, California law AB 982 that was passed last year, uh, students will be given the opportunity to make up work um, should a student be suspended from school um, at the student's request. So if a student is suspended from class, be sure to contact your teachers to request that work um, so that you do not fall behind further um, in your learning. In terms of distance learning, students that miss a test that's work during distance learning due to an excused absence will still be able to make up that work or any test given in that um, absence. When it comes to my class rules, um, first and foremost, this class is going to be a place where all students can feel safe and encouraged to do their absolute best. Students are expected to adhere to the following rules that I'm about to discuss, as well as those outlined by the TUSD Student Handbook. Uh, students that do not follow these rules or the school rules will be held accountable. So, first off, be respectful. Respect the teacher, the students, any other adult in the room, including yourself, uh, including thoughts, ideas, and other person, people's personal property or school property. Integrity. Do your own work. Don't cheat or plagiarize. Uh, compliance. Follow all school rules, including cell phone rules. When it comes back, when we get back into the normal swing of things, I'm, I'm pretty lenient with my cell phone policy uh, as long as the cell phone's not getting in, in the way of your learning um, and those time periods where you're not able to use your phone and are able to use your phone are going to be made very explicit and the same goes for distance learning. Um, be prepared with your learning supplies, be open-minded to new um, information or opinions and observe the first draft comment recommendation that is as follows. If somebody says something that might not have been what they meant to say, kind of think about it in terms of like an essay. If you're writing down something for the first time, sometimes, uh, for me, when I'm writing an essay, it's not always the best piece of work. So um, I have to go and revise some things and it's not always exactly what I wanted to say. The same thing with discussions, the same thing when people are trying to express their ideas. So observe that first draft recommendation and offer people the grace to kind of revise maybe what they said and what they might have actually meant. Um, Attendants show up to school on time, ready to go, whether we're at school or in distance learning. Um, when it comes to tardies, I do mark tardies. Uh, I am a person that holds people accountable, um, not just for you, but for me and your parents. So make sure that you are on time to class um, with the consequences listed below. That's what will happen from the district policies. Uh, food and drink when we're back in in class, be sure that you are cleaning up after yourself. I typically only like to have students bring in water just so we don't um, create a mess or a, a mess that could create stains. And so when it comes to food and drink in the classroom, please keep it to contained water. And if you make a mess, you will be held accountable and we'll probably have to clean up your mess. When it comes to digital learning norms and digital citizenship, um, the following are my recommendations and um, really encourage you to follow the rules below when we go into our distance learning format so that everything runs smoothly and we create a equitable learning environment. Uh, when it comes to 
keeping this a uh, professional learning environment, it is good to mute your microphone. That way when you join, there's not background noise or when somebody else is speaking, they're not having to talk over you, the background noise from your microphone. Use the chat if you want to post any questions or a discussion or some sort of input on anything. The chat is a good way if you don't necessarily want to speak up just yet for you to kind of break the ice there. Be in the moment. As much as I like playing Call of Duty, I know it's going to be a distracting thing in distance learning to see that that PlayStation or that cell phone is right there. But trust me, be in the moment and you are not going to have to go back and, and relearn anything. You're not going to have to feel like you missed something. Being in the moment is going to allow you to uh, reduce the possibility of missing out on something and will increase your understanding of the content in the class. Make sure you turn on your camera. Um, utilize backgrounds if you don't want your background to be shown. Uh, but really turning on your camera is going to allow me to understand that you're there and, and really be able to understand um, working with who I have in my class and whether or not um, things are being received well from you guys. So making sure you turn on your camera um, is going to um, maintain that professional environment. Uh, also on the idea of backgrounds, be mindful of your backgrounds. Uh, avoid using distracting backgrounds. If you have any inappropriate backgrounds on there, you may be removed from the call and be subject to discipline. Be punctual. Our class starts at 9.15. Uh, or 10.15 or 10.45, make sure you log in five minutes before uh, so that you are not late. And if you're five minutes early, you're not going to be five minutes late. So um, same thing goes when we get back to school. Get in the zone to learn. Can't stress that enough. When you wake up, go through your routine like you normally would, but find a place where you can get in the zone free from distractions and get ready to learn. Look to part two. As much as I love wearing my pajamas, they're super, super comfy. There's something that makes getting up and getting dressed, makes you get ready for the day and be able to tackle it in a, um, in a productive manner. I encourage you guys to do the same. Uh, try not to eat on screen. There's this new sandwich shop right next to the high school that I've been going to a lot. They make super, super, super good sandwiches. It's called the Sandwich Spot. As much as they make good sandwiches, nobody wants to see me or anybody else eat on screen. So um, it's kind of gross. Uh, so when it comes to eating, please try to do that off screen um, in between classes or at lunch. Um, also know that we can all see you, what you're doing on screen. If you're picking your nose, we can see that. We don't really want to see that. So uh, be uh, kind of aware of what you are doing on screen so that you're not distracting somebody else and we're keeping it a professional learning environment. Um, also, be open-minded and respectful. As stated above um, or before here, uh, be open-minded to new information and opinions and observe that first draft comment. There is nothing, I repeat, nothing that we will talk about in this class that will lead you guys to come into class or log into class as friends and leave as enemies. While we might have a difference, as a, a difference of opinions at times, this does not mean we can, will, or should treat each other in a negative fashion. Having said that, these are the consequences below for all of the class rules and norms. When it comes to grading, uh, your grade is going to be calculated in a weighted category um, and um, with that, you will accumulate points underneath those weighted categories, but they will be weighted in terms of your summative assessments, your formative assessments, your participation, and final exam to equal 100%. The 20% is going to be your tests and quizzes. The 50% is going to be your homework and classwork. The 20% is going to be your participation, 10% for final exam, and these is the grading scale for your final grade. I do update Aries every other Friday at the very least, but I tend to tote myself as keeping my Aries most up to date um, as one of the uh, leading people on campus here. I like to get assignments back with feedback and input it into Aries as soon as possible for students. Um, so that is going to be a place to check your grade. I will not be of keeping up to date the grade book in Microsoft Teams. So make sure that you're checking Aries um, to find out what your grade or your student's grade is. And this link will bring you to downloading the parent portal. 
Uh, please allow for up to a 24-hour response if you're sending me something um, as I'm focused on teaching the students and replying back to emails when I have the opportunity. Uh, when it comes to participation grading, active and positive participation in class via Microsoft Teams and other online platforms are an essential element of this course. Students are expected to come to class prepared and open to sharing their thoughts, ideas, and opinions and work in class-wide discussions, group work, and through individual quick writes and reflections. Negative participation in the sense of deliberate and or continual disruption and or distractions to our learning community and world history can also adverse somebody's participation grade and result in additional consequences. In terms of extra credit, uh, I give it on occasion and it should be taken advantage of when I offer it. However, extra credit is not given on request by students because they have failed to complete uh, assignments prior to that point or simply failed to perform the class. TAs, these are your expectations here if that applies to you. Academic dishonesty when it comes to this class is that you basically don't cheat, don't plagiarize, and don't engage in other dishonest dishonesties such as fraud, duress, deception, tri theft, trickery, talking, signs, gestures, copying, and any other methodology during an assessment, um, formative or summative. How can you succeed in this class? Super simple. Follow these one, two, three, four, five, six rules. Be on time each day. Come prepared and organized with your binder or digital files and materials. Complete all assignments on time. Be organized and keep all graded work until the end of the semester. Understand that if you miss a class, you should talk with a classmate for notes or upcoming assignments and actively participate in the class and ask questions. Talking to me. Microsoft Teams, the best way, email, the second best way, I respond pretty, pretty quick, um, but the probably not the best time to do, like, to ask questions in terms of, like, individual personalized stuff is, like, if I'm in the middle of a lecture or in the middle of giving directions and you ask something that's completely irrelated, try to keep that stuff to before or after school or in some downtime during class. Um, when it comes to asking for help, I am here to assist you in your academic success and I will attempt to lend as much support as possible. If you ever need my help for further explanation, need supplies, need to just talk, get stuff off your chest, I will give you all I can and my time and more. Um, and I will be do my best to offer these things when I see the need. However, you know your needs better than anybody else and you know when to ask for help and I am here to be that person if you need help. So um, try not to do that the day before a test, but I am generally pretty available and always willing to help students. All right, we've made it, and it's about 20 minutes, so um, maybe a little bit more than that. So I stuck pretty close to my estimation. When it comes to the syllabus, that is all the important information at this point to discuss. What I need you all to do is one last step is to sign an acknowledgement form saying that you agree to the policies and also that you've reviewed these policies and understand them. So how we're going to do that is you can either, I think there's a QR code right here, um, yeah, right there, um, that you can scan with your phone or you can click on this link, nope, over there. There's a link right there. Um, it's blue, it's tiny, it says tinyurl.com. Um, you can click on that link and it will bring you to the uh, Microsoft form where it's asking you to provide your digital signature as well as a couple other logistical questions. And with that, I would like to ask that both you and the student review it and um, fill that out together. And once you're done with that, um, you are good to go. So with that, I... Uh, applaud you guys for making it to the end of this super, super engaging video, and thank you for the time to uh, review these policies before we get started, because that's going to help set you guys up for success in this class for this year. So with that, I look forward to an awesome year in world history, and we'll see you guys later.